Hi, my beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom, part two. I picked today's topic, I plant, I water, and the third person makes it increase, right? But I named it, I plant and I water. And I share the Bible verses with you um, that you could go back and do some research yourself and look up what Apollos mean, who he is, and always do Apollos um name Bible, or you could even use one Corinthians three um Bible verse, the meaning of Apollos, or do Apollos um uh Bible meaning, you know, and it takes you all there. Um and this is just to do and then stewardship. It's just one word, one word. That's able to tell the projector and who they are and who they were. So even when it talks about Alexandria fell in love, all of them were demonic. Um, the Veroni, they know it as Veronica. The Smith, you know, I, I did one about the Smith. They were the slave drivers, you know. So they're out there selling, you know. They're transferring, doing the people. They're evil people. They didn't give a shit. They were out there selling. That's why mother says, I'm going to go and I'm going to sell your wife. I'm going to sell your husband. I'm going to sell your daughters to see what you have done to mine. See if I will do it to you. You know? So now let's start with Corinthians. And yeah, it does say that. 1 Corinthians 4. It says, let a man so account of us. And I'm going to go ahead and just start over with that. Let not a man, this is let a man so account of us. That as the minister of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it requires stewards that a man may be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judge of you. A man's judgment, and yeah, a judge, not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, and yet I hereby justify that he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore, the judge be nothing. And what is what is it? And you would think even if it was Paul right here speaking, or even ones that are, are watering for Satan, that are supposedly the 12 chosen, why would they set up a snare for you? Why would they plant? Why would they have somebody sow a seed? And why would Jesus come and, and seal it if he is the Lord? And why would they, everyone would get paid according to their purpose? You know what I'm saying? Why? You know, if he is the creator, he's already blessed. Come on. You know, because they're sowing dogma, cupcake dogma for you to say false doctrine and sold out. To what they were doing, signs and wonders was all what witchcraft and sorceries. And I read that when I read to you Acts uh, 19. If you go back and look what Mercury and Jupiter were, where were they gods? Um, it tells you they were all there serving um, a little bit of, of Jewish, um, it said, and a little bit of Greek. But they were sold out, you know. So they're preparing you for judgment day. So it was okay. Keep go ahead because he said, I get to have your soul. And that's also in here. It's all in the Bible. It's just which one, which one are you? He says, right? Now it says 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who both will bring the light, the hidden things that are of darkness, and that will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And this thing's brethren that I have figured to transform myself and to Apollos for your sakes, right? Again, let me read that. And this thing's brethren that I have in a figured transform to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that he may learn in us not to think of man above, but which is written that no one of you can be puffed up to one against another. For who maketh thee the differ another from another? Who makes you different from it from another? And who and what has thou and thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why doest thou glory as if thou had not received it? If you have already sweeped and, and this is almost like a puzzling thing that you have to go because it could mean, oh, well, man, the word that he's saying, I have received it. I believe it. Hey, it is. That means that, that Jesus is Lord, that he's planted and he's seen. And as you do research, you know what it is that he's doing. He knows that judgment day is coming. 
He said there's going to be one that's going to bring the, what is in the darkness, what was being preached to the light. He says, and then the judgment is going to come. Which one are you? Where are you at? What are you doing? What are you believing? You know, for I think that God set forth us, the apostles, last as that we were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but we are yet wise in Christ. Because really, and it's true, because I said, man, we got sent out for slaughters. So you see when it's a creature talking and then God talking, our real God, our creator, Mother Yahweh. Or you get also when he's talking about his own God, the angels, and then God's people. And this is true. For I think that God has sent us for as apostles last, not apostles because we're not apostles, so that's a enigma, almost like a twist. That if we are pointed to death, for we are made spectacle unto the world and to angels, because you got God's angels and then you got demons. That's what it really is. Have you ever seen demon and angels? Let that let that sink in, you know, because that's really what is going on. They wanted you to think that it was about a love story that, you know, this hearted from hell went and took my husband away. And you know what? No, honey, it was never about that. You know, yes. I mean, they have their, their things that we're all going to have to go. We're all going to have to dig ourselves out of that hole that we did. He threw them just so they don't come into a covenant with us and then filled them with so much of themselves that they are God and kings. And then they forgot about God. And they said, man, you don't have to go with those 10 commandments. You don't have to listen to them. Satan had them right where they wanted. So they don't ever walk into their inheritance. They don't ever walk into their kingdom marriages and nothing. So they thought they were getting something. I seen some of them digging through the trash, wanting to eat. And I barely had a little bit to eat and I would share with them because I knew what it was like to be out there, not have. I was blessed where I was at. Even if it was a place on the floor, I didn't give a shit. It was better than outside. I wasn't where I used to be, but everything was on my way. Everything I called a drive-by. It says, for we are appointed to death that we are made spectacle unto the world and to the angels and to men. That we are fools for Christ's sake. But if you are wise in Christ, that we are weak, but ye are strong as you are an animal, but we are despised and we are, you know, you know, because the people might say we are weak, but yet we are strong because she's given us a miracle and all this in, in Christ Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit. It says, but we are honorable, like we're royalty for God's sake, but yet we are despised. We're hated. It wasn't, it wasn't Jesus that was hated. Jesus had people following him everywhere. Because they were drinking that dome where they were believing. And yet he was doing. You see people that were throwing rocks at them. And saying, hey, you know, you're you're sitting there. And see, we took it the wrong way. I took it the wrong way until I read um, Acts 19. And I read more into it. That they were telling him, hey, you're doing witchcraft. You're doing sorcery. You're actually, it said, you're contacting medium to heal this people. And to them, they thought it was a miracle. But they were using witchcraft to heal somebody. But a lot of the witchcraft were coming from them that they were putting on people. Then all of a sudden they removed that witchcraft and guess what? Ta-da! There you go. I did a miracle in front of you and you're buying right into it that I am Jesus. I am Lord. I'm doing signs and wonders. And yet the Bible told you that she said, I'm not going to come and I'm not going to do no signs and wonders. However, there's going to be somebody that is going to come and do signs and wonders, do everything in front of you. And you're going to be, you're going to believe it, including the elect. So now, um, 1 Corinthians 4, 11, even unto this present hour, we both are hunger and thirst and we are naked and buffeted and we have a certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands being revealed that we bless being prosecuted and we suffered it being defamed. We entreated, we are made as filth of the world and we are of scoring of all things and unto this day. I will write not these things to shame you, but as many of my beloved son, I warn you. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, and yet you have not many fathers. For yet in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. And do you see? It goes there. Wherefore, and it's none. It's no man. There's no man. There is no man that is God. And it tells you that. Wherefore, I beseech you, followers of me, the real creator of ends and earth. 
It says, for this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in Lord, who shall bring you into the remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up that they, it says, as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly. If the Lord will and will know that not of the speech upon the puffed of, of the puffed up of the power, but for the kingdom of God is not in the word, but in the power, the Holy Spirit, the power of the most high God. And the Bible is sharper than a two-edged sword. But what will ye? Shall I come on to you with a rod or in love? The rod of iron, that means she's coming out to you as war. Or she said, or am I coming to you in love? in the spirit of meekness, you know, humble, which is it? She's telling you, she can send the four horses that are the um, four destructions, which is death, the pestilence, um, phantom and destruction, you know? Um, I read that to you. Um, so now we go to 1 Corinthians 5. Mm. It says, it is reported calmly that there is for an action among you. For such for an action, it is not so much name among the Gentiles. That one that should have his father's wife. And this is 1 Corinthians 5. For ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned, but you have not done this, the deed that may be taken away from among you. For verily, as absent as the body, but spirit in spirit, has judged already as though I have present concerning him and he that has so done the deed. But in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such as one unto Satan, for the destructions of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, right? It says Lord, but again, they add Jesus. Your glorifying is not good and know that ye are not a little living and a little liveth and the whole lump. Purge out therefore, which means you're always, you know, purge out therefore the old living that you may have a new lump. But as you are living for every Christ Passover is our sacrifice for us. And then um, let me just go real quick back over with 1 Corinthians 5. To deliver such one unto Satan for, for the destructions of the flesh, right? The spirit may be saved. In that day of the Lord. And of course they put Jesus. But it's to save your soul. And it tells you how. Again I'll go in it. Your glorifying is not good. But know ye are not the living. But unliveth the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old living. The old ways. That you may have a new lump. As you are unliving. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore which are the real creators this is the ones that really did die for the cause. You know, that they were going out there preaching the truth and you have the whole world that was against them. And I'm pretty much, you know, who they were out there, you know. Then it says, 1 Corinthians 5, 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not of the old living, but neither of the living of malice and wickedness, but the unliving of the bread, sincerity and truth. I wrote on to you the epistles, not the company with fornicators, but yet altogether with fornicators of this world. For or if this is or with the covets or extortioners or with idlers or them that you need to go out to the world. But now I have written on to you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covetous or an adulterer or a railer or a drunkard, or an extraordinary, and such one that know not to eat, for I have to, it says, and then not to eat, eat none of that. All of that is sin, all that is the the pathway to hell. Um, it 
Yeah. And then it says, um, 1 Corinthians 5, 12, for what have I to do to judge them also that they are without? It says, do not ye judge them for what they are within, right? And it's true. You know, it's almost like you get the mockers that mock with the market, the, the mockers. And then you get the people that are living in a sinful world, but they're saying, her, her, her. And really, I'm not living in the ways of the world. I left that years ago, and I thank my mother for saving me from that pit of hell that I was in, that she brought me from filthy rags, from a blood covet from Satan into her glorious light. And I am a witness of the light. There is a light in the end of the tunnel. That's how I knew I got safe, and I have never looked back. I've never went back to my old ways, nothing, anything. And the way I walk, the way I speak, totally transformation. Yes, of course, here and there, a little bad word comes out, you know. Um, I have to watch what I say and speak, you know. So at the beginning of my journey, I had asked her, I don't know my do's and don'ts. So I said, please don't give up on me, but work with me because I don't know. You know, um, everything is a test for everybody, you know. But you get the ones that are out there sinning and still pointing at you. And all they could do is bring up way in the past that I don't even live there anymore. They do because they're sitting with the mockers. So they're still sitting with the fornicators going, ha, ha, ha. You know that she did. And you laugh at them because, hey, you should be over here. What are you doing over there? You know, but those are the people that are getting in those fleets. You know, they're going to get in those fleets when all your children of God are going to get blessed for following the way. It's just like the story um, that Jesus said, you know, if you're able to see, then, you know, then you're not in sin. But when you don't see, you're still sinning. You know, um, when the Pharisees asked him, you know, are we blind? Are we spiritually blind? And he said, oh, no, you know, he goes, I'll tell you what. He said, if you're still sinning, then, you know, you can't see. And if you could see, then you're you're not sinning any longer. Do you know what I'm saying? So you have totally transformed. And then that's what they talked about, the guy that he put mud. He put clay because he, he, he mudded the water with lies that he is God, he is king, that is man, father, and son. So when he, they said, hey, go wash yourself, that man went and washed himself with the water. That means he went and got baptized, left that sinful world. And he said, hey, isn't that the beggar that was there? A lot of God's people are out there begging when there's a way out for them and you are told. And there's a way out also for those people in the world. It's not to be in a blood covet in that boat covet with Satan and leave that sinful world and come back to the creator, our mother God, Yahweh, which is the Ten Commandments and the church, church once, once a week, but also apply it. And it means that you live that sinful world. You know, the sons and daughters that died on that cross, that really died on that cross for preaching the truth to you, you know, um, so it wasn't in vain. Because if not, that means like you're getting a free pass to continue sinning. That defeats the whole purpose, right? No, it doesn't work that way. You know, it's for you to change, transform into the ways from we were all tainted. <laughs> it's crazy. It was insane. You know, and it was right in plain sight with us. And it was almost like everybody was comfortable with it. And, you know, nobody knows, right? Nobody was saying anything. There's a difference. Everybody knew. People still know. There's still a lot that they know in secret. And they're keeping it secret. And that's what she said. So then that way, you don't get keep buying into the lie that is man, 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 a man's covet. It was a woman's covet. It's the daughters of firstborn that were thrown from the Garden of Eden, the four Garden of Gods, the four Garden of Eden, the first four born. Then the man came later, and I read that to you in Genesis. But they're, they're still in the form of tree, and then she made the man later. Adam and Eve did not come until the second. That's really what happened. And then there was lies, remember? So with that being said, just pay attention and remember, you know? And um, I'm going to close it up with 1 Corinthians 5. It says, but them that are without God judgeth, and they do. Therefore, put away among yourselves that wicked person. 
because you're not you're not even walking with God, but then you're on that side and going, hey, 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 you being just like Satan, the accuser. What did it say um, with Joshua when God went to go pluck him out of there, out of hell? And he said, I'm sorry, he's chosen, he's branded, I'm taking him. And then what did he say? He was fighting for his bones the same way he was fighting with Moses. And how does he do that? You know, he says, God, remember in judgment day, that judgment day is coming. And I just read that to you. That's what it says, save your soul. This is what well, we're doing this and we're doing that. And God is telling you there is a way out, out of that judgment day. You don't have to be part of the new world order, but you actually get to get saved. You and your whole family. Why wouldn't you want to? You know, but um, hope that's able to help you out some. Um, I'm working in a couple more Bible verses, um, you know, and hope that's able to just do it, you know, be able to open your eyes to what was in darkness and bringing it to light, that there's more to it. And the uh, enigma and how they try to pretty much twist it so you don't get the revelation of it, you know, and, um, let me see. This is just something that I had wrote down. Um, the universe and the path that we travel through in this world. And this is what's going on right now, brothers and sisters. It says the universe and the path that we travel through this world in the afterlife, because there is an afterlife, that it that it stands for enduring the connections between this world. And the next, the power from above and from below, you know, it's, there's different access, you know, the king's power, the majestic, the intelligence, the power, the most high God, not the kings of the world, but the Holy Spirit that actually gives you the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And yes, I don't know everything. I study every day, but I know I'm willing to get to the truth. I wanted to get to the truth. So I know there was, and she, she's the one that was directing me. I told you she was sending people too, <laughs> you know, and I just thought, oh, they just want to bug me, you know, nah, nah, nah. you know, no, and she said, well, do it. I was like, study, you know, and just when it gave me the revelation about Jesus, that they're all the Hellenists, they all come from the Hellenists, and that's in Luke 3, 23, read it down, uh, the grandfather of Joseph, uh, the grandfather was a Hellenist. And you know, then Mary, you see, and it goes all the way down to Adam. And you remember when Adam was perished, he was sent to hell. He died because of sin. And that's his genealogy. And that also tells you he had Cain. That's where it starts. And it goes on, on, and on, and on. You know, and then it says the denotion. The There's denotion and connection. The biblical um, paradigm, you know, and it says the Christians that may speak to an unbeliever about miracles, but naturalistic is paradigm. It says worldwide epistem that it has no way of incorporating to get you to believe something that isn't. And that's what they do, you know, so they do miracles in front of you and boom, you sold out to get to you to believe something that isn't. And then I did the par paradigm, is to believe something that isn't. It is something that is actually to think about, about a framework for understanding the reality of, of the paradigm through which the Bible projects and approaches the scriptures of the Bibles to identify the story that leads to Jesus. It's made up, brothers and sisters. Um, and I'm just going over some of this so you could. And my mother just says, return unto me with all your heart and I return unto you. The book, um, the book central is the theme and the concept that borrow from the perplexed prophet, you know, prophets, prof yeah, prophetics um, and salvation to which come to Judah and Jerusalem only to the people that turn to Yahweh, that they will not only receive the divine favor, but the land itself, it will become fruitful. You know, she's saying, return unto me and I will do it. You know, she's speaking to Judah, you know, and, and it's all in there. You know, she's speaking to Jerusalem. She's speaking to her sons, her daughters, all of these. 
you know, bring you back to inheritance. And it tells you over and over again how to do it, but you're fighting the people that sent because of who she is. Just know that the people that do listen, they are, and you already see that. Now you get the ones that weren't, they were still doing evil, still attacking God's people still, you're going to see them go back to nothing because they're following the ways of the world. And you don't follow the ways of the world. Once you're healed, you're going back to the same vomit that took your soul, that made you lose that spirit of the, of the living God. And that's when she turned away from you. And how do I know that? It tells you in Sal. When Sal did that, what did Sal tell that man? Find me somebody with familiar spirits. Familiar. He went to a medium. And then remember how powerful God is? That he went through that. And he said, what are you doing bringing me through here? And he said, the minute that you turned to unfamiliar spirits, you became an enemy of the Most High God because we went to the evil for help. We didn't go to her. We didn't go and pray in the spirit. Every time I said, I always stay in prayer, always. I said, if something comes at me sideways, I drop down to my knees and I pray. You know, so it, um, it's just to turn and return to a broken relationship, the divinity and the earth community right it means all the people animals all other community and beings she's asking everybody you know from an evil empire will will be brought low and god's people will finally be able to be delivered from corrupted from a human system deliverance and liberty no blind justice it will bring you from that evil empire and she will do so much not just for you she's calling everybody out everybody and that's all you have to do. And we're not even worth that because of the way we were living. And yet she's willing to do it, you know, because she doesn't want you to have that kind of ending in the new world order, but they thought they were going to have you. We're not going to be part of that. I don't even care to know what is going on in the world order when they put it, because I'm not going to be part of that. My family is not going to be a part of that. It's yours. You see people that are giving up fame giving out money, and God is going to do so much for them in the new heaven, the new earth. He's already, he's separating. He's doing, the, he's parting the sea. Blood covet and water covet. And that is already going on. It says, um, warnings of us being comfortable, right? With sin, because we are. We think that's okay. Then the devil has you right where he wants you. You know, there's an adversary who would love to lure us to sleep in the midst of sin, adultery, immortality around us that is in the way that he is in us in the ways to put us to sleep with the luxuries of the world, you know? And again, it brings you to the religion dogma. In Christianity, a dogma is a belief communicated by divine religion revelation to define of the church and organizations formal relations um, religions positions may be taught to new members or simplicity communicated to those who choose to become a member you want to be a become a member of this new heaven and earth that you can you know buddy is um Buddy, um, when I did the crisis of religion, you know, that Buddy Christ was the one that made, um, I think he appeared in the Smith in 1999 with the film there, the film Dogma. But in Dogma, understands the sense thereof is to um, to turn to components, doc doctrinal, you know, is false doctrine, and other is judicial, um, disciplinary, um, doctrine, statements, scared scriptures with scarce scriptures the particularly the power of binding and losing which jesus gave his church which is binding also dogma is a catholic church that is deferred with the truth revealed by god which is the magistrate of the church declare as binding and this is just some for you to go over um so i'll be able to go ahead and send out those um videos um so give me just a minute to get um to a different location where i'll be able to send it over to you um i hope this was able to help you um and just do a little bit more further um studying and it brings you to the revelation 
have an amazing Friday. I was thinking today was already, uh, yesterday was Friday. All day behind, I was like, I slept, got comfortable, that's 